Have you looked up at the sky lately? What did you see? Perhaps you saw a clear blue sky, or maybe there were a few puffy white clouds floating around. Or maybe the sky was streaked with gray clouds. Occasionally, when you look up in the sky, you can see an airplane or a bird flying by, or even a red balloon somebody accidentally let loose. Some days it is fun to lie on your back in the grass and stare up at the interesting shapes of the puffy white clouds overhead. Perhaps you or someone you know has even flown in an airplane up among the clouds high above the Earth's surface. The ground we walk on is the top layer of the Earth, called the Earth's surface. You can think of the sky in two layers. There's a big blanket or bubble of air that surrounds Earth. This bubble covers the whole Earth. All the ground and oceans and everything else on the Earth's surface, including you. This bubble of air is called the atmosphere. But the atmosphere does not tell the whole story. The second layer of the sky is all of outer space, which lies beyond the atmosphere, an endless expanse of stars and moons and other objects. Of course, during the day here on Earth, it is easy to forget that outer space is there. But it always is. The Earth, your home, is just one little object moving around in the middle of it all, like a speck of sand amidst all the sands in the ocean. During the day, the sun shines over the Earth, shedding light on all the animals and plants that live on the Earth's surface. The sun's rays or beams of light spread across the skies, which appear blue to your eyes. The sun itself is a star. It is not part of Earth or the Earth's sky. In fact, the sun is far, far away from Earth, so far away that it would take more than three months to reach it in the fastest rocket ship. But even if you could reach the sun in a rocket ship, you would never be able to get close to it. That is because the sun, like other stars, is an enormous ball of very hot gas. That means the sun is not a solid object or a liquid. It is made of gas, a thin substance that objects can pass right through if they didn't burn up first. Everything that gets too close to the sun burns up instantly. Just how enormous is the sun? Think about it. If the sun were a huge bowl and the Earth were a little marble, you could stuff about one million marbles into that bowl. In other words, it would take a million Earths. To fill the sun, the sun is just one out of billions of stars in space. However, the sun is our star. It is the Earth's star. Without the sun, Earth would be a cold, lifeless hunk of rock. All living things on Earth that you can see every day, from the trees to the bees to the flowers and the fleas, rely on the sun in one way or another. The heat, light, and energy of the sun allow life to flourish here on Earth. Most living things wouldn't be able to live without the heat, light, and energy of the sun. The rising sun signals the start of a new day. In the morning, the sun rises in the east, and its rays shed light across the land. The sun warms up the land too. It's usually colder at night than it is during the day. People wake up and get ready for a new day, getting dressed and eating breakfast, and then traveling outside to wherever it is that they go—to school, to the office, to a store, or simply out for a walk. Have you ever noticed your shadow on the ground? If the sun is behind you while you're walking down the sidewalk. Then your body blocks the sun's rays and creates a shadow or shaded spot on the ground. Your shadow is not the only shadow in the world. Clouds cast shadows as well. So do buildings and trees. Have you ever rested under the shade of a tree on a hot summer day? If so, you were resting in the shadow cast by the tree's leaves and branches. On a hot summer day, you can feel the warmth of the sun on your skin, and if you do not use sunscreen, then you may get a sunburn. Ouch! 
The sun's energy can burn your skin, and that's bad. Sunburns hurt, and if you get sunburned too often, it can cause serious damage to your skin. On the other hand, the sun's light is also good for you. When your bare skin is exposed to sunlight, your body creates vitamin D, which is one of the many vitamins your body needs in order to stay healthy and strong. So playing outside in the sunshine isn't just fun, it's good for you too. At the end of each day, when the sun goes down in the west, the sky changes. It isn't blue anymore. The sky becomes black and new sights appear. Instead of clouds and birds and blue sky, you may see an array of shining stars. You may see something else as well, not the sun, but another object hovering in the skies above, the moon. Sometimes you can also see the moon during the day. Over the next several days, you will learn about the sun, the moon, the stars, and you will hear all sorts of amazing and interesting facts about outer space the place beyond the Earth's sky or atmosphere. This study of the stars and other things in outer space is called astronomy. Astro means star. The read-alouds you will hear in the coming days will provide a basic introduction to astronomy, but it's only a beginning. There's so much to learn about the stars and other objects in space that you can spend the rest of your life studying it and never run out of new things to learn and discover. That is because astronomy is the study of everything beyond our little home that we call Earth. And if astronomers have learned anything through the years, they know that there's no end to the amount of new knowledge and surprises to be discovered in the sky and the study of the stars and outer spaces.